Hello and welcome to the Ark Survival Evolved Hardcore Series. And this is my attempt on the extinction map. So join me as I try to save humanity within only a hundred days as I try to complete the map. In order to defeat monsters, we're gonna have to make monsters of our own. But monsters isn't the only problem. What the hell happened to you guys? Oh, thank goodness. You hear that, Wilson? We're saved again. As I introduce to you our villain. Oh, Kruger, good, you're awake. Formerly known as Sizen, the terrible and the ruler of all kaijus. The worthy one with the command to bring, I summon thee, the mighty Titan King. After being too late to prevent the curse, he managed to summon King Titan. And he now had an army of kaijus at his disposal. Oh, I need to get out of here. There's no time to explain. I gotta go. See you on the other side. It was now in my hands to try and take down this beast. But we do have an all-star cast helping us along the way. So, sit back, grab yourself some popcorn, and get ready to enjoy the most epic storyline in a 100 day video you've ever seen before. As you're about to be in for the ride of your life. Right off the bat, I found some free hide. I then started running around looking for a starter base location, made myself some primitive clothing and primitive tools so I could start farming. I also noticed this weird robot. I didn't know what it was, I just knew I wanted one. I managed to get myself a mortar and pestle made, and I could start working on some spoiled meat to get some narcotics going. I made some cooking pots for levels to unlock bolas, and on day two I wanted to focus on getting the foundations. Stop the foundations. So I pretty much spent the rest of the day farming, and by the end of it, I had all the foundations needed and unlocked some hide armor. Got some more free hide, I didn't know what was killing everything, but hey, I wasn't complaining. My floor was done and I had some good clothes. Oh, the bugs again. Luckily my clothes was good enough Seriously? to help me fight off some weird flying ants. That did manage to kill me on my first run. Finally, I had the walls and the windows and my base was coming together nicely. By the end of the day, I finished up the farming to get the roof and everything in place and I now had my little lodge set up. I unlocked some smithies and a forge. Went to go work on some metal but noticed the monkey. Monkey. I knew this had to be my first friend, so I asked my Discord for name suggestions <laughs> and they gave me Andy. So, me and Andy yeah. were ready to Andy. take on day 3. We went back to base to start working on some more necrotics, get a smithy going and start working on some more metal. But farming with a pick definitely is too time consuming, so I got myself a crossbow and went looking for an Anki. I pretty much had oh. just enough arrows to take oh, this guy down. Arms. Once he went down, I decided to name the tribe Do Please it. Subscribe because these videos take Do ages it. to make and Do I really it. appreciate it. I then farmed up some more narcotic, got some more arrows back and went looking for Do another 30. friend. Uh, you want to join the tribe? I'm going to put you on YouTube and things and make you famous. So I bowled her up, shot her in the face with some arrows and she went down in no time. In the background I spotted another robot that seemed to be bullying some tames and I knew that nice. this was the culprit that's been killing Sir. everything. So I collected some more free hide and spotted a high level PT landing nearby. Yes, that's the one we were looking for. So I bowled up the PT and knocked it out as well. I then went back to the Iguanodon. She was finished taming so I saddled her up, named her Janice and I went looking for some prime meat. I found another robot bullying some stegos and I was able to collect some prime meat from them. The PT finished taming so I named him Flappy Bird, the Anki finished as well so I named him Kevin and by the end of the day I really had some nice starter tame so it was now time for a note run. I spotted a tappy in the mesh but decided not to report it and I continued my note run which is basically a series of boxes that gives you explorer notes and give you a massive XP that allows you to unlock all these nice goodies. After I completed my note run, I was a pretty high level, high enough to unlock flak, and I was now ready to take on the wastelands for the first time. I wanted to murder some corrupted dinos as they drop corrupted nodules that is a replacement for polymer. 
but I managed to miss my footing and fell down the cliff and got pounced on by the raptor. Luckily, my PT was on neutral and came to my rescue just in time for me to hop on. I then slaughtered the raptors, collected the nodules and went over to a city terminal, but I noticed you couldn't make cryopods here, so I went back to base, farmed up some more metal that I could leave to cook overnight, I then made some more narcotics, filled up all the forges with spark powder and I made my way over to the wastelands. I wanted to go to blue op in order to make the cryopods from there. Completely forgetting about green op, but hey, at least along the way I found another XP note. And these buffs were really helping me. Finally, I reached blue op. Then I noticed there is no actual obelisks in extinction. So I just wasted a bunch of time, but luckily the second part of my trip here was to find a snow owl. I spotted a somewhat okay level 1, so I proceeded to grab my trap, place it down, and on the morning of day 6 I got the aggro of the owl. I slowly lured it over to my trap and got it safely inside, now I just needed to make some more stone arrows. So I went to farm up some thatch and flint, and I noticed the snowvis fall down into the water, Copper! right near the trap. So I went back to the owl, shot and tranked it out, and finally it went down. I then went back to the water to kill the Ovis. Poor little sheep, I wish he'd rather drowned instead. I collected the mutton that I needed, fed it to the owl and I named him Mask Owl after another member in my discord. Once the taming was done, me and Mask Owl slowly made our way back to our little lodge. Once I reached base, I dropped in all the resources required to make the snow owl saddle. I saddled up Mask Owl and I went out to kill some enforcers as I really wanted to get my hands on these and it seemed like the only way to actually get them is by murdering them as they drop a BP then. So I proceeded to bite the enforcer, finally revealing my BP but this was an ascendant one that might be way too expensive. So I spent the rest of the day going around enforcer after enforcer, collecting all the BPs in the hope that one of them would be affordable for me to make. I then used my owl to harvest up some lamppost, as this way you get element dust. Probably a dode would be a lot better, but I was just aiming for the cheapest BP. So I spent the rest of the day gathering all the dust that I could possibly find, and by the end of the day I finally had enough. I now just needed some more poly. So back to the wastelands we went. I went in search of some easy kills and started by fighting some dilos. I got a bit brave to take on some stegos, but definitely had to make a tactical retreat as they were absolutely slaughtering me. I then found some more dilos, that's an easy target, so I proceeded to kill them, and I heard my first ever OSD passing over my head. Unfortunately, it was a yellow one, but I needed to do one of these as it's the only way to get cryopods. Finally, I made my first ever enforcer, popped it out and named it Melvin. And me and Malvin yeah, went exploring yeah, around. Look, we seem same. I didn't want it to taste just how strong Malvin was, so I killed a trike that went pretty easy, and I was feeling pretty brave. So I spotted a Rex nearby, and I thought, ah, easy kill for Malvin. But for some reason, I got dismounted. I believe this was because of Andy. Luckily, I was able to hide underneath Malvin. Hop on, but my health was really, really low. I had to fight the Rex with everything in my power and managed to be victorious. Pretty much just in time, as Melvin actually went down to only 90 HP. So I knew I needed to park this guy before I get him killed, before actually even enjoying him. It was now the start of day 8. I was really in need of cryopods and I spotted a blue OSD which is just the right one I was looking for. I then went searching for a Rex and found this amazing find. I knew I needed to get that Rex so me and Janice went out to farm up as much narcotics as we possibly could, made some arrows, drank arrows and crossbows and I made my way back on day 9 to trap up the Rex. I had a little bit of a boo-boo by placing my billboards, as once I placed the last one, I got myself trapped inside, but luckily I escaped the bite of the tech rigs. 
I then went to land in on the edge above it and started tranking it out. But annoyingly, another Rex made its way over to see what we were doing and literally walked straight into my trap. I didn't let this bother me and proceeded to knocking it out, but then I realized I still had another one in there now. So cautiously I decided to break up the billboards and luckily the other Rex simply walked out. I now had the opening that I needed so I hopped on Melvin to go collect some more prime meat, fighting some easy stego kills. But I think I've kind of picked on the wrong stego as this guy was very powerful. Melvin, Melvin got so close to dying oh, but right. luckily he was running away so he shouldn't hit me anymore. Yeah, I you but clearly I was wrong and Melvin was no more. I took my revenge there and then of the stego and oh, spotted you another you? robot attacking my Rex before I could even feed it the prime meat. Luckily the other Rex came for its defense but now it was after me. And for some odd reason, Andy was sitting the wrong way around, looking at the Rex and navigating me that it was hot on my tail as I leaped off the cliff to escape Please it. Be deep enough. But I oh. didn't escape yeah. it as I saw the Rex oh. yeet himself off the mountain. I was now in serious trouble. I had no stamina. My health was going down from all its bites. But luckily I remembered I had metal gates and I managed to get one place to create a gap between me and the Rex and I was able to make a run for it. By the next day all my prime meat had already spoiled and I had to collect some more. I probably should have just used the owl in the first place then Malvin never would have died. But finally I had all the meat that I needed and I tamed up the Rex. I lost a lot of effectiveness from those hits. But Chomper Miss Prime was finally tamed and I now had some serious backup. I led the Rex back to the base and I got ready to place down a gravestone in honor of poor Melvin. You died due to my stupidity. Oh, I miss you, Melvin. So after saying goodbye to my first fallen friend, I made my way back to the smithy to make my first Rex saddle, saddled up Chomper Miss Prime and I was ready to go look for that blue OSD. First I had to give myself a snazzy new haircut, you all know what that means. Alright let's see if this blue drop is still here. It's time to introduce our first two guests. So please warmly welcome Aaron Aztec and Jacko the Traveler as I saw a shadow of some weird object flying over my head. What is that? So I knew I needed to go over and investigate and I spotted another green robot and then found this. Amazed by all the tech I had to go over to investigate. This is crazy. Oh wait. Yeah. Is there someone there? Uh, Mr. Ops, is that you? Yeah, I'm Krigger Ops. How do, you, how do you know me? Uh, I have heard you might be here. I'm, uh, Commander Korg. I'm waiting for some rangers to arrive. Uh, we're preparing to attack. Rangers? Attack on what? Uh, King Titan? Yes, sir. We are preparing any Jaegers we still have left for one final stand to end the reign of Sizen the Terrible and the Beast of Akaju he is controlling before it's way too late. Jaegers? And what do you mean it's too late? Oh, haven't you heard, Mr. Kruger? We no longer have an army, we are the resistance. And if we don't make a stand, the world as we know it will come to an end. In order to fight these monsters, we created monsters of our own. Well, alright, uh, I'm here to help in any way that I can. Wait, you think I'll let a civilian pilot one of my Jaegers? Um, I mean, you still didn't really tell me what a Jaeger is? And then I heard those large mechanical Whoa. footsteps. What is that thing? I've got to get a closer look. Oh, this thing was amazing. Oh, what the f***? Commander, I thought you said no civilians inside of the hangout. I mean, I'm not a civilian. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm Kruger. I'm just having a little conversation with the commander here. So you're the guy everyone keeps raving on about. Man, he's rude. What the f*** are you still doing in my way? You mind getting in my way, Connor? Um, it's, it's Kruger. Listen, mate, I really don't give a shit what your name is. Whatever, Commander seems to like you, but to me, you're dead weight, mate. Do that again, and I'll drop you like a sack of kaiju shit. Uh, don't mind him, he still has anger issues, but he is one of our best pilots, though. In order to join our team, I need to see that you're worthy first. Well, let's see if you're able to take down a Category 3 kaiju. You'll find one in each of the biomes. I suggest you track down one of my communications experts in the desert biome. I haven't heard from her in a while, but she could tell you some more. So, uh, Kruger, the world is coming to an end. So where would you rather die? Here? Or in a Jaeger? After meeting these guys, I knew I needed to get my hands on one of those Jaegers. 
So I made my way home, where I was being attacked by some robots, and I knew I couldn't keep living here. The place was just not safe. Every time I came back, I was under attack. So I went out with an owl to start looking for some more OSDs. Unfortunately, I only found a red and a purple one, so I continued searching in the hope to find a blue one. I stumbled upon some cool looking tech rexes, but unfortunately they weren't female. On the start of day 12, I went searching around in the city to hopefully find a Quetzal as I can move my tames that way. I spotted a pretty cool base location and shortly thereafter I found a female tech rex. So I knew I had to go in and knock her out so I could get Chomper Miss Prime and I's girlfriend. Finally, she was on the run, but so was I as a Bronto was right on my tail, running away from a Stego. But now I had the prime meat that I needed, so I slaughtered the Bronto, fed it to the Rex. I tamed her up, but decided not to name her since she was a pretty low level and I didn't think she would survive the trip. But she did manage to survive it, and she was actually quite playful. I really liked her, she kept hiding from me, playing games on the way back to base. And finally once I reached, I made a fabricator, and I again had to manage another situation of being under attack by robots. I really knew I needed to move from this location. So I learned how to make some ACs to start breeding, but then I heard it. Another OSD coming in. And I just had this hunch that this was gonna be the one. And hey ho, what do you know, it turned out to be a blue one. So I grabbed the last gear that I needed, hopped on Chomper Miss Prime, and I made my way over to fight my first ever OSD. So, for those of you that don't know, OSD stands for Orbital Supply Drop. That basically is a loot crate that you have to defend multiple waves of corrupted dinos, and once you complete all the waves, you would be gifted with some prizes raining from the sky. In no time, I had my shield lost, and all the tames were moving in on the OSD. But, the waves on the blue ones are really quite easy. It was armies of Dilos, Raptors, here and so the odd Stego, but I really made ease of it and got it done in no time. So I hopped off the Rex to go claim my prizes from the OSD. Finally I had some cryopods. Now quick disclaimer, I know my hair is no longer green here, but that's because the guest feature scene I actually record way later on and I gotta make sure I've got a good run before I bring in some guests. So if you see my hair normal for the next few days, that's why. But anyway, let's continue. On day 15 I went searching for a gas bag and I finally spotted a pretty high level one. Mm, I like what I see. He was under attack so I had to get him away in a safer location where I could hopefully get him tamed up. And then he leaped into a corner that seemed like the ideal spot. So I gave chase after him. Oh, this might be brilliant. And once Baby. I had my opportunity, Baby. I placed some Baby. gate frames around him so he wouldn't be able to get away. I now just needed to handle the one corrupted PT that ended up flying right into him. But after he was dead, I was able to oh, heal up the gas bag and start the taming process. Let's get this guy healed up. And finally, I would have the means to move to a new location. So, on the start of day 16, I parked Mask Owl and I was ready to start tranking out the gas bag. <laughs> I feel so bad doing this, so cute. I didn't know it yet, but that gust of air actually blew Mask Owl down the cliff. And once I heard the Rex roar, I knew what had happened. I rushed in to try and save him, to try and whistle him away. Why are you down there? But I was simply too late, and I lost my buddy. Rest in peace, Mascal. Finally, I went back to tranking out the gas bag, but I ran out of arrows. And of course, a rock drake went in to attack him when I wasn't there. So I tried to get the aggro to lead the rock drake away, but he nearly slaughtered me, and I had to make a run for it. I wasn't gonna give up. Son of a bitch, come on, get away from him. I went in one more time to lure him away and realized my stam was about to go out. PTs were on me and I was just not in a position to fight them off. I knew I was in trouble. 
I tried to run away and thought the PT was gonna be a goner as I threw out my newly tamed female tech rex. She managed to get rid of the PTs and I was able to hop back onto Flappy Bird just in time. But before I could cry her up, the thylos were right on my tail and I had to sit back with nothing to do as I lost my female tech rex. This was really a sad day. So many deaths, so many casualties, and I didn't even get the gas bag. I just couldn't deal with the pain, so I took some drugs to help me sleep it off. But on the start of day 17, I drank a cup of concrete to harden myself up, repaired my gear, collected some more narcotics, and I was back determined to get the gas bag. And of course, the rock drake was still there. As soon as I came in, it's like he knew he was in for trouble, so he flew off and I was able to trank out the gas bag, but I didn't let my guard down as I knew the rock drake was still in the area. Berries, buddy. Luckily, Here. I did have Chompermas Prime on my inventory, so I threw him out as soon as I got scent of the rock drake coming back in. It took me no efforts to get rid of him, but of course he had to get one bite in and spoil my effectiveness completely. But there was no time to sit around and mope as I had some things to do. So on day 18, I went in search of another OSD and I stumbled upon another explorer note. I then threw out Chompomus Prime and cried up Flappy Bird and with this added XP buff, I was gonna get a lot more XP from this OSD. So I continued slaughtering Dylos and Stegos and I had it completed in no time. Heyo. This was also a good way to kill some time as I waited for the gas bag to finish up taming. So I collected all my goodies and slowly marched Chompomus Prime back to where the gas bag was knocked out. He took his final bite and I named him Blimpy. Once Blimpy was tamed, I made my way back to my lodge to slowly start packing up everything. I took the Anki out, could gather up some more needed material, collected some paste, made a chem bench and a jenny, and I loaded up Blimpy with everything that was somewhat important. I farmed up some more missing materials to make the ACs, and a trap since I needed to replace my snow owl. Once I was in the snow, I managed to track down the overs fairly easily and I found a somewhat high level owl again. I took him into the trap, proceeded to knocking him out, tamed him up and I named him Alejandro, another discord member. Once I reached my lodge, I hopped on Blimpy and we slowly started venturing to the desert. Now, it did take me some time to get used to the controls of a gas bag and not fall myself to death every single time. Finally, I reached the location where I wanted to build, cleared out the existing terrain and started laying down my foundations. I went with quite a big structure as I wanted a nice house and it took me the whole day. On the start of day 21, I started with the walls, filled it in with greenhouse and started with a ceiling. Once everything was done, I started day 22 by working on my crafting area dropping all my goodies that I would need to do some proper farming. And on the start of day 23, I dropped down my decor mods. So welcome to Oasis Estate. A neat little one bedroom cozy house perfect for the starting bachelor. With a luscious garden and jacuzzi outside, ideal for those hot summer days, as well as a garage area where you can get all your hard work done. As you move on inside, you've got a lovely open plan living room complete with a large 60 inch TV to sit back and watch some movies after your hard adventures, a fully fitted out kitchen that you'll probably never use, as well as a bedroom complete with an ensuite bathroom, a nice little outside relaxing area with your shisha, and that's pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed the tour of Oasis Estate. But now let's get back to some work. Yeah, you're just gonna chill up there and be back, okay? On the next day, I grabbed Alejandro and I went out on another adventure. I wanted to go out and search for a yellow OSD, but I encountered an amazing metal location that I made a mental note of. I spotted a pink OSD, some tech rexes, but unfortunately no females, and then finally I saw it, a yellow OSD, and I felt brave enough to finally take it on. So I threw out Chompomus Prime and I got to work on killing the corrupted dinos. It took me no time to work through the first few waves, but things quickly got a bit more intense as the next wave spawned in Spinos and my force field went down. I threw everything I had at it to try and take rid of all the Spinos 
Volcanoes, Dilos and Raptors, but they were completely crowding me. Day 25 started and I had a brief opportunity between two waves to get some spikes placed down, so I quickly made work of covering up the OSD, otherwise it's just not gonna make it. And it was just in time because the next wave was even more hairy. Races, Spinos, Carnos, Raptors, everything was being thrown at this OSD. But finally I got through the wave and I used a brief opportunity while a racer was glitched to force feed the wreck some meat and get him all healed up again for the final two waves. The next wave was a lot more relaxed and it was mainly Orthrus and some more racers. Finally I was down to my final enemy and it seemed like he died from boredom as I searched around forever but couldn't find him. And now I had the opportunity to collect all my hearts, eject my loot and have all the nice packages rain down from the sky again. I was expecting a lot better than a blue OSD, but I'm not gonna lie I was somewhat disappointed as I really didn't get anything too crazily nice. I then hopped back on Alejandro and continued my search for a female tech rex. I spent the entire day 26 just searching around all over in the wastelands in the hope to find a tech rex. But I didn't have any luck. Actually, I had amazing luck as I found a Quetzal, which is really something I've been looking for. Oh, I want that. It wasn't the best level, but I just knew I wanted it. So I knew I needed to keep somewhat tabs on it and go and get myself some honey. Now, if you haven't seen my rag video yet, honey is something you can use to get a Quetzal to fall down to the ground and then trap it on the floor. So I dove down, switched to heat vision and went searching for some beehives. Finally after using some guides I managed to track one down. I slowly moved in, cautiously grabbed myself some honey and I made my way back to the wastelands, hopefully to still find the Quetzal. It didn't take me too long to search around, it was still in somewhat the same area, so feeling super relieved I was ready to start kiting it into the city. This way if it goes to the ground there, it's a lot safer to tame. But for some reason, honey wasn't working anymore. The Quetzal was just not interested in my sweet bitey treats. I even tried owl bombing it, but just nothing was working. But then I realized just where I was. I was quite close to my little lodge shack. So I dove down, placed down my billboards that I could destroy for some metal and paste, made myself some grappling hooks and a parachute and I came up with plan B. I would grapple onto my owl and set it on aggressive towards the Quetzal. This way I can slowly start shooting at midair. But I kind of forgot to deploy my parachute and it was super jumpy all around. But then I spotted this opportunity as the Quetzal was flying solid towards a triangle shape and maybe I could get it stuck there. After Alejandro dropped me on the floor, I finally had the Quetzal exactly where I wanted it. So I quickly whistled passive, hopped off and placed down my trap. Finally I was able to start tranking it out. Of course I had to heal it up in between to make sure the Quetzal wouldn't die and I gave the final shots and it went down. I quickly then went to grab some more prime meat, fed it to the Quetzal and once he was done, I named him Patrick. And boy did I have big plans for this guy. This was definitely a huge victory for the day, but I still needed my tech rigs. So on the start of day 28, I was ready to set out exploring yet again. I spotted an amazing looking RG as the new Valentine's event started. I also got a little bit too close to a pink OSD, but I decided to use this opportunity to gather some intel and see exactly what I would be up against. But the Wyverns were quickly onto my plan and I had to dive to try and escape away from them. Luckily I went out of reach for the OSD. So they started despawning and I was able to make my escape. I then spotted another tech rex, unfortunately a male, but shortly thereafter on the start of day 29, I finally found the one that I was looking it's a for. It's female. And it's pink. She had some amazing colors, but unfortunately she was picking on way too many stegos and I got a bit nervous that she might die before I even get a chance to tame her. So I tried to go in to give her the necessary healing for her to win this battle. 
Hopefully this way she can think that we belong together as friends. And what do you know, I managed to help her finish the fight. But of course she took a bite out of me. Maybe this is how she shows her friendship? Finally, I continued leading her towards my old trap, dropped down my metal gates and I got her aggro yet again. I kited her into the trap, but my owl was way too damaged so I had to drop down on foot, place the gate in and man, those were some slick moves. Finally, I could start tranking her out. Luckily this time I didn't have any issues. I fed her the prime meat and I named her Barbie Chomp which I later on changed to Optimus Pink after a Discord suggestion which I found a lot better. I then cried up my tech rigs and went back to start breeding. But then I spotted something strange in the distance. Is that a flame? So ladies and gentlemen, welcome our next guest feature, K Plays. Hey, who's down there? Is that you, Kruger? Um, yeah, it's me, Kruger. Let me guess, you're the communications expert? Sure am. Thank goodness you're here. Hey, go on, Kruger. I'm Kay. I'm the chief technical for Commander Korg. Why are you all Australian? Are you guys related to Steve Irwin or something? <laughs> Them kaijus, they've not really been hitting us down under. But I do have a bit of an issue. There is a Category 3 flying kaiju here in the desert biome that's been really screwing up my communication signal. I haven't been able to give the commander his recon updates. Well, I mean, I can just take you to him. That's mighty kind of you, Kruger. But no, I need to man this tower. This has been the only place where we've been able to get a signal out for the rest of the team. Okay, so where's the kaiju you're talking about? Well, it only seems to come out every time the signal uploads all our log files. Yesterday was the last update. I'm surprised you didn't see it. The kaiju is some sort of lightning attack that's been damaging my tower. And it won't be able to stand too much more. Please, Kruger, you have to take this thing down. Well, seeing as the commander wants to test my skills, I'm definitely keen to do so. You beaut, Kruger. Well, you have 15 days before the next upload. Kruger, do you mind giving me your GPS? I should be able to reconfigure it to a radio and get hold of the commander. I really need some Ellie for my Exo Jaeger. Oh, that's a mouthful I didn't understand, but here you go. Also, if you need me, I live just down there by Red Op. Thanks, Kruger. Good luck with your journey. Thanks, lady, but um, okay, I need to get back to my place. I've got some things to do. Oh, it's good to be home. Finally, by day 30, I was back Andy, at my base. Was everything all right? I had a quick update to see how everyone was doing, and I threw out my new tech rexes. Finally, I could get to work on breeding them. They looked pretty amazing together, and they fell in love right away. I then threw out Patrick. But before I could actually go and start breeding, I decided to go get some more metal. So I emptied out Blimpy, made myself some bullets just in case I ran into something. I cryoed up Chompamus Prime so he would have to say bye for his lover for now. And then finally I hopped away with Blimpy. I also spotted an explorer note and you know you can never give those up. And then finally on day 31 I was executing my plan. Are you running? Why are you running? Now this plan involved me getting a dead gas bag because I needed its bladder. Now why you might ask? Well there's these things in ARC that no one really ever uses. And of course since I'm on extinction I had to check it out. So I threw out Kevin and started farming up some metal and once I had enough I dropped down my supply crate, filled it up with metal, farmed up some more and by the end of the day I had my supply crate filled up and I started inflating it. Now this was gonna be epic. Alright so for science there it goes. And with that I stood back in awe as my Amazon metal delivery made its way to my base. It took quite a bit of effort to follow this thing around so I kept a close eye on it to make sure it was safe but it was taking way too long so the lazy man's way of farming metal. I sat in the jacuzzi as I waited for my delivery to arrive. And finally, it was right outside my door, filled with stacks of metal. So I filled up the forges and I went inside to watch some TV, exhausted after all the science. On the start of day 33, I had to get a start on looking for tributes. At least I know where to go if I need Meglos. So I made my way over to a place called Gator Island from now on. It's like Gator Island 
I'm definitely gonna get all the sarkers I need here. There were so many gators and capros. Hello there. Talking about capros, this guy tried to sneak up on me. But luckily I had some fast responses and I managed to get Chompamus Prime out to start slaughtering some gigantic lizards. I went all around correcting all the Sarko skins that I would need in order to summon the Desert Titan. Finally, after clearing out the whole lake, I went to grab some cementing paste to kill some time so they could respawn. And by the end of day 33, I was back to slaughtering the oversized lizards to collect the last remaining Sarko skins that I needed. Finally, I had everything and I made my way back to base to have a nice relaxing evening. But I should probably start breeding at some stage, right? So finally, these two guys started dropping some eggs. I did eat some candy by mistake. I don't know if I was supposed to eat that or not. As it came with a Valentine's event and I wasn't really sure what they did. So after some research, I found out they could heal up your dino and give you a massive boost on taming. Ah, oh, they look so cool. Finally, I had some Rex babies. And now I just needed to get the HP and the melee in the new lines. After numerous breeding, I finally had a female and a male that was suitable for breeding. So I had the male with come the high on, HP good air, guys. and the female with a high melee. Now I just needed these stats together in one baby. And finally, by the end of day 35, I had the one that I was looking for. Yes! Now, since I still had a bunch of runt rexes that didn't get the stats, I knew just what I wanted to do with them. So I healed all of the ones up that didn't have the HP or the melee, and I was planning to go and do an OSD. So I farmed up the saddles that they would need, cryoed them up, and I made a trap just in case I stumble upon a Giga. Finally, on the start of day 37, that's exactly what I did, as I spotted a level 85 female Giga. Fine, it wasn't the best, but it would have to do for now. I placed down my trap, got the aggro from the Giga, but he managed to get a few nibbles at my butt as I tried to fly away, but in a matter of no time, I had the Giga safely inside the trap, and I now just needed to place the final gate behind him. Once the gate was in position, I had a horrible turning maneuver and he managed to take another bite nearly taking me out, but now it was time to take her out. So I shot a bunch of arrows and by a bunch I do mean a bunch, I actually had to make even more. I finally grabbed the prime meat in case it went down, but unfortunately my crossbow ended up breaking, but I didn't anticipate for this. So on the start of day 38, I was ready with my repaired crossbow and finally the Giga was running. I did hear a Yudi behind me and I had to make a run for it. This just came at the absolute worst time ever. But finally I had a good ledge where I could stand on, shot the final arrows and down went yes. my Giga. I got to taste my new candy and it really helped a lot on the taming process as my prime meat ended up spoiling before it took the final bite but the raw meat did the job. I then named the Giga Fiona, cryoed her up and now I was feeling brave enough to take on the OSD and of course it had to be a red one. So I did a quick explorer note, so I can get max XP. While I protect this easy OSD, right? I placed down my spikes and I got ready to take on the challenge that lied ahead. The first wave went really easy and I was feeling super confident at this time. My shield however went down, but finally the other Rexes got in on some action. And then, by the next wave, they got some serious action as so many Rexes started spawning in. One by one, my army was falling. I was really surprised just how tough this OSD was, but I was determined to finish the job. That isn't all, there was only one left. So I made a quick run around to grab any bags with hearts that I could find, cryo the final Rex up, and I wanted to get a little bit more done, so I fed myself the heart to heal up my Rex, and next up I saw Wyverns and I knew this was not gonna end well. I tried to back up but they were right on top of me so I had to fight before I could get out of this wave. I collected all their tributes but now I was kinda pissed off 
I wanted my revenge and I had a Giga in my pocket. So I pocket Gigged the Red OSD. Yeah, yeah, take that, take that guys. But then this happened? I really didn't even realize how quickly the Giga was losing health. I mean fine it was unleveled, but it was a Giga. How were all of these things slaughtering through us this quickly? I then noticed there was just one hostile remaining, of course the Wyvern, but I used this opportunity to rather make a run for it, well a tactical retreat. And I healed up the Rexus and I knew there was another way that I could farm hearts. So by that afternoon I ventured over to the Valley of Death. I mean I had my ride or die runt Rex with me, I was feeling confident, but of course Gigas were here as well. I got a bit nervous when we got cornered and it even brought a buddy with. And honestly, I didn't know if we could win this fight, but we didn't have much of a choice. We had to engage. Finally, the first one went down and my ride or die was right on my side as we slaughtered through the second one. These were some really close calls, but hey, we pulled it off, so I healed up and I needed to continue as the mission was still not over. I nearly had all the hearts that I needed, I still needed fire talents though, so I thought I would kite up some wyverns and bite them on top with the ricks. But my plan was quickly prevented as a wyvern was right on my tail and I had to dive into safety. And at least that's what I tried. My heart was beating so quickly, I was so stressed on trying to get away, but no matter how much I maneuvered, the wyvern just stayed right on my ass. Finally I saw a bit of a gap where I might get the wyvern stuck and I went for it. But unsuccessful they were still behind me and I knew I had to abandon ship. So I did a quick leap of faith threw out Chompomus Prime as I saw oh, no. Leandro get slaughtered. I hopped on just before a flame attack and I was able to get rid of the last two wyverns. Now it was revenge. I knew I didn't come here all the way, lose another tame for nothing. So I ventured to another spot, safely above the valley of death. I was a bit nervous as I made a leap of faith to another rock edge, but I managed to make it and now it was time to kite over some wyverns. I knew that if I wanted to prevent that desert titan in 5 days from now, I had to make a final stand. So I shot some pretty good shots, might I add and one by one kited more wyverns over, slowly murdered them and I had all the talents that I finally needed. So I jumped and parachuted back to my base. Well parachutes only get you so far so I had to do quite a bit of walking but finally I reached base and it was time to hold yet another funeral. Sorry for your loss guys. Thought my plan would have gone a bit smoother but yeah definitely came at a heavy price. On the start of day 41, I was really starting to run out of time and I got a little bit sidetracked when I saw this weird machine gun laser face thing walking around. It was a Velonosaur, but hey, I couldn't let that get me distracted now as I had a plan that I needed to carry out. So I built the platform on top of Patrick, but temptation got too much as I went back to start shooting the Velonosaur. That is until it shot back and nearly killed me. But I was determined, so I played some peekaboo, hiding behind the edge between shots, and finally I had it on the run. So I made chase after, nearly falling to death, but finally the Vila was out, and now it was time to find a mate for it. So on day 42, I tracked down a pretty high level one, started tranking it out, got shot and had to play some more peekaboo with it. So ducking in between shots led to it finally running away and me shooting the final arrow, taming it up. And I present to you Machine Gun Karen and Machine Gun Carl. Now they just needed to breed. The next day I went out for a meat run so that I could get all my babies fed. But once I was back I didn't see any eggs. Well that was because Karen was a dude. So finally I went out to find a real female. After playing some more peekaboo, nearly getting shot to death, I learned that you could use your tame as a meat shield while you shoot it it will be aggroed on your tame only. So Flappy Bird took one for the team and finally I had a real female knocked out. Tamed her up, named her Machine Gun Karen and of course we had to give the other one an appropriate name. Finally I had some babies growing, I had my Rex army growing, 
and I decided to split it up in a team of Alpha and Beta so that I can have two waves to fight the Desert Titan. I started preparing Patrick which I now will dub War Machine as I got a bunch of Rexes lined up on his back and I did a quick taste flight to test my chaotic plan right before K showed up. Yeah. Well, Krieger, it looks like you've got um, some heck of a plan. You want to join me for the data upload? Um, sure, let's do this. I'm probably as ready as I'm going to be. Perfect. Well, I reckon I can just meet you there. Yep, yep, yep. All right. See you, Krieger. All right. Uh, sounds good. I'll be there shortly. At this point, I was definitely feeling the nerves. I mean, I've never played on Extinction before, let alone even Just fight a Titan. But it was no backing out now. Alright, so are yeah. you ready for this? Ready. So let's cue the first cave montage. There's an XP, XP node up here if you want it. I've already grabbed the artifact, Kruger. Let's go. And finally, we reached the summoning chambers, and I was ready to fight my first ever Titan. Enter the Desert Titan, a Category 3 Flying Kaiju. We then had a weird glitch occurred, but luckily a quick mount and dismount sorted it out. Good luck, Kruger. I've got to head back to the communications tower. Wish you all the best. I'll see you soon. Thank you. Make sure you keep him busy. I'll do my best. Oh, I'm already being targeted. Ah! Oof. <laughs> so I made my way back to base to grab War Machine and finally we were making our way in pursuit of the Titan. I was a bit nervous on how this would play out. Especially after my very first hit, I ended up losing two of the Rexes. But there was just no time to fly down and grab them again. We had to make do with what we had. So I flew in right under the belly of the beast, lining up the Quetzal so we could start attacking. But for some reason the Rex's bites weren't registering. So I tried to see if I could get it damaged with a Velo. And it did quite a bit of damage, but I knew I needed these Rexes to get in on the fight. So I positioned the Quetzal going slightly lower and that's when I noticed the Rex's bites really starting to add up and I knew this was the issue. So I repositioned the Quetzal and now finally we could go to war. I went absolute haywire with a Velo, shooting everything in my power. But Stam was a bit of a problem, but I had to do my contribution to this fight. Couldn't just leave it for the Rex's. So I went into turret mode and just sprayed its wing wherever I could trying to find those weak spots. And finally, I noticed the Titan was about to go down. I can't believe my plans are working. This crazy ludicrous plan had somehow actually come together and we were about to be victorious. Oh. Hey. Finally, my first Titan was slain. Victory. So I had a quick look at the loot that I received. Oh, that's a lot of loot. That's amazing. And feeling victorious, I flew down to grab the two lazy Rexes that missed the fight. Of course, I had to grab a Dermis first to collect my trophy and take that postcard shot of a real white wingspan. I then positioned my trophies and clearly communications was restored as I got a phone call. Oh, uh, hiya, Kruger. It's Commander. It's uh, Cork here. Um, hi, Commander. What can I do for you? Well done on killing your first kaiju. Well, thank you, sir. I have another mission for you. Commander, I'm kind of busy. Is there anyone else? That rude ranger of yours? So, uh, I meant to start a revolution, but I didn't print enough pamphlets. Anyway, I need you to track down Hannibal Hutt. Hannibal Hutt? He lives in the sunken forest. He sells kaiju body parts on the black market and also helps fund the Jaeger program. Okay. Well, if you could take down the forest kaiju, he will provide you with the blueprint for a Jaeger. I like that. I have to go, Kruger, but good luck. Man, that is an unorganized commander. A46, I went out to farm up some more metal. I dropped down another delivery crate, filled it up, deployed it to my desert base and I hopped to a second location. On day 47, I dropped down another one, filled up a bunch of metal, 
So much so that I had to put all the excess metal in Blimpy, cryo up the Anki and the Rex that was protecting me. But then I realized you can't deploy when another balloon is in flight. So I now had to kill some time nearby. So I went over to a nearby crystal location. And while I was out farming crystal, I didn't notice it but two reapers snuck upon us. Before I could reach the Rex, I got hit by them and I knew they packed a serious punch. So now I needed to defend Kevin and Blimpy. The fight took ages, so much so that I was forced to eat raw meat to keep myself from starvation. But finally, the reapers were taken care of. I could cryo up the Rex and Kevin, hop back on Blimpy and deploy the second delivery crate. I then hopped back to home with Blimpy and my first package was already there. So I offloaded all the metal, cooked up some steaks and I wanted to test out my new fabby that I got from the Desert Titan and this aloe made the perfect target. Finally I had him down but now I needed a way to get back up to base. I then spotted in the sky my second Amazon delivery arriving. Dropping all that metal into the forges for it to cook up. Now I really had a lot of metal cooking but it was time for another adventure. It was time to get my hands on a better flyer so I went searching for a high level snow owl but stumbled upon a manor and since I happened to have a trap on hand by Captain Fat Dog it was time for me to test this bad boy and I must say I'm really impressed by his designs this was super cheap and it worked amazingly. In no time I had the manor in the trap and knocked out, fed it some prime meat and candy and I named it Magmus. I then also went to knock out some snow owls. I found some pretty low level ones but they would do the job since my next mission would involve me moving to the sunken forest. So I made some more missing resources, structures, a chem bench, grabbed all my tames and some building gear and it was time for me to venture to my next location. So I dashed over and finally reached the sunken forest. I went searching around and stumbled upon a pretty nice location, not too far away from the boss arena. It was flat, it was near water and it seemed like it would make the ideal spot. So I started laying down my foundation, placed my greenhouse glass, filled in the walls and all the ceilings and by the end of the day the structure was coming nicely together. Drop down my furniture mods and I present to you Forest Loft Inn. But don't be fooled by its size as this loft pretty much has everything that you might need. From a nice fully fitted out kitchen and dining area, a nice relaxing fireplace, a cozy bathroom and your loft style bedroom overseeing the entire living plan, it's really an ideal location. Outside you have a jacuzzi and barbecue area, ideal for relaxation. I hope you guys enjoyed the tour of Forest Loft Inn. But time to get back to the grind. On the start of day 52 I stumbled upon some strange crystals and I found the culprit that was dropping them. So I fed him some stone, flint, crystal, just any junk I had in my inventory and I had my first female gacha tamed. I then got her a mate, cryoed them up and I realized I was going to need a lot of stone for these guys. So after dropping a pin so I wouldn't get lost, I made my way back to this wasteland surface. I went searching around for a Dodicarus, this way I can get a lot more stone a lot easier than with the Anki. But I found something quite tempting as I spotted my first ever Elevane and it was only a 10k so it seemed like the ideal challenge. So on the start of day 53 I started protecting the Elevane. Now let me clarify how that works. Similar to OSD, there's waves of corrupted dinos trying to destroy the Elevane. And with the more health that you manage to protect it with, the more Ellie you'll get out at the end. It was quite an easy challenge with the mana, I must say, he moves around amazingly and does quite a lot of damage to the tames. In no time I found the final culprit and once I had him slaughtered, my Ellie vein was protected. So I went around damaging all the small ones but it took me quite a lot of time. So I decided just to focus on the main one as I really didn't need Ellie at this moment. This was more for science. I then turned all my dust into Ellie to reduce some more weight and I was ready to go searching for the Lodicarus. Found a pretty cool looking one the next day so I quickly tranked it out, cryoed it up and I made my way back to base. I then uncryoed my snow owls and I named one Natasha and the other one Mando after some more discord members. The gachas were named Greta and Groot and I named the Dodicarus Bloody Mary to match her colors. I then made them some saddles and I went inside to watch some TV while I waited for pallets. 
But the next day I decided to take Janice out to start working on some more narcotics. I really needed to get a new Giga. So I made some bunch of narcotics and some spark powder, gathered up some metal to make some dino gates, made some arrows, repaired my crossbow, made a bunch of trank arrows and finally I was ready to go out searching for a new Giga. Hopefully this one survives more than a day. And on the start of day 56, I was out in the wastelands in search for a Giga. And I found a pretty high level female one that would definitely do the job. She wasn't too far from my old trap location, so I decided to try and get her aggro and lead her back there. But she was being very problematic, constantly losing aggro. But after a lot of trial and error, I finally got her closer to the trap location. I got her up right next to it and I cautiously went in to destroy one of the gates to allow a free space to move in. Hopped back on Magmus and got a jump scare by the PT thinking it was the Giga but she was also closely behind so I leaped away, waited for her to move into the trap and I jumped in to position the back gate. I was definitely cautious not to get myself stuck in as well but luckily I managed to pull it off leap away and finally I had the Giga back in the trap. Now let's hope 300 arrows will be enough this time as I really didn't want to repeat on what happened the previous time around. So with that we started tranking the Giga. 50 arrows in, 100 arrows in and first crossbow down. Repair the crossbow and the arrow shooting continued. At this point finally my Giga was Surprise, not running as I got a serious bite that really caught me off guard. I knew I needed to be a bit more cautious but it was 3am in real life. I was so tired. I just wanted to get this Giga down. Clearly my concentration was just not what it was. But finally the Giga was really running and I knew she was about to go down. So I moved over a bit more because she made a bit of trouble to shoot her between the gates. Surprise, mother! Another bite, nearly ending my life. This Giga was really taking advantage of my in real life tiredness. And now it was war. I continued shooting, even though my thirst really started adding up. I was forced to pick some berries just to keep myself from passing out. I made some more trank arrows since I was getting really close to running out. 7 arrows remaining, final bow. I was really feeling this Giga was just not meant to be. So I got ready to shoot my final arrows but then I finally realized she had went down in the background and finally I would be able to go to bed. So I fed her a bunch of narcotics and then I realized I didn't have enough narcotics to finish the job. So I made a quick dash over to my desert base as this was the only place where I had some more narcotics ready to go. I rushed back, had a sip of water and I got back on Magmus to make the trip as quick as possible. Gathering up some prime meat along the way. Fed her the prime meat. I also demolished all my old gates so I could use them again in the future and get all the material from them. The Giga tamed up, I made my gates and I ate a bunch of berries and meat not to pass out from thirst and hunger. But of course I ate some narcotics since I was clearly overtired. It was time to go to bed. But by the start of day 58 the journey continued. Like the journey of this monkey and Dilo. Don't ask me where they're off to. So I grabbed a bunch of stone, filled up the gatchas, grabbed some more stone and filled them up. I got a bunch of crystals so got even more stone that I could feed to them and then I went to sit back to wait for some more crystals. I watched some neeps gaming in the meantime just to kill some time while I waited for all the crystals to be produced. Hopefully I'm gonna get a good long neck from this. The next day I basically just spent making narcotics and gathering up all the crystals in the hope that one of them would be a long neck. But unfortunately the best thing was a metal pick. I was still feeling confident so I started making trank darts and a primitive long neck in case I don't get one. But hey ho I finally got a good long neck and now taming was about to get a lot easier. I then logged off and it was time for my new guest. Trying to get into the game. And then this happened. I didn't understand why but for some reason Ark deleted my character. He was right here. So I had to force join the tribe, give myself all the XP that I had before, relearn all my ingrams, 
But hey, finally now I had a new buddy I could watch TV with. And it's time for me to introduce the new guest feature, Granty. Uh, wait, what's that? Yeah, I think this is definitely it. It's gotta be. So I made my way over to investigate what this place was. What are these things? Hey, Green Air, what are you doing here? Um, I'm looking for Hannibal Hut. Uh, I was told he'll be here. I you like the name? I took it from my favorite historical character and my second favorite restaurant, Pizza Hut, in New York. Now, tell me what you want before I gut you like a pig and feed you to my kaiju skin lice. Well, um, Commander Cook sent me here. Ah, uh, you're the new kaiju slayer in need of a blueprint for making a Jaeger. I mean, I guess that's kind of correct. Excellent. Well, as soon as you take it down, I will have my team gather the body, and you will get your blueprint. Now get out of here while I'm enjoying my pineapple pizza. Yuck, yuck. Should've known someone like you eats pineapple and pizza. What was that? No, nothing. Goodbye, Hannibal. I'll, I'll let you know as soon as it's done. And just like that, I needed to get out of there, because that guy was really creepy. So on the start of day 61, I made my way back to the wastelands, and I was now in search of a male Giga, if I wanted any chance of taking that forest titan down. I did stumble upon another XP note, so I thought I would use this opportunity to level up Magnus a bit, as it would also help me gather up the hearts that I needed. So I went around kidding a bunch of Rexes, and then I thought I'm brave enough to take on a corrupted Giga. I got onto a ledge where I was able to shoot at some more, and I thought I was winning the fight. That is until he just simply vanished. So now I knew I needed to go over to the Valley of Death, as that's probably where I'm gonna find the most hearts. So I continued farming up Rexes, taking on the occasional low level Giga, but rather going to ledges to fight them from a safe distance, and things were going pretty okay. I was killing so many of them, I was definitely feeling overconfident. Well, that was until a fire wyvern aggroed on me, and I thought I would be fine. I mean, I should beat fire, right? But no, this guy was determined to kill me. He was circling me around like a shark circles its prey, slowly draining my health away, preventing me from getting spam. And at this point, I didn't know yet on how to get active spam if you jumped off. So I summoned up an ounce of stam, just enough for me to make one leap away, and then I went for it. Leaping into safety. At least that's what I thought, but the wyvern was still hot on my tail, and I was now into serious trouble. I was one bite away from death as I made one final leap in a hope to try and save Magmus. And luckily, the wyvern lost its aggro, and I was able to heal up. But my mission wasn't over, I still needed to farm a ton of hearts if I wanted to fight the titan in 3 days. So I kited away a bunch of rexes away from all the gigas and wyverns and one by one started killing them for their hearts. I did manage to get some wyverns on their own as well, and this time I was a bit more victorious than the first time around. Maybe that's because they were mainly aggroed on stegos. But finally I had slaughtered a bunch of tames, collected a bunch of hearts and my end goal was even closer in sight. I then stumbled upon another XP note, just in time as a giga came to munch at my butt, I then leaped into safety and collected some more hearts. This was pretty much an all day process, but by the end of day 62 I had everything that I needed. Well, everything aside from the Giga, but the Arc Gods were smiling upon me as they gifted me with a level 10 male Giga. I went in to trap it, but noticed it fell down a ledge. Then it ended up biting me through the mesh. Hey, that rhymed! I'm a poet and I didn't even know it. I then threw everything I had to try and get this guy tamed as my health was really draining quickly. I dropped down all my gates, leaped away and I went to grab the last one that I misplaced. But for some reason, this Giga was trapped. Weirdly enough, he wasn't able to escape between the gates and the cliff, and I used this as my advantage as I nervously shot him. Hopes and praise are all that's holding this guy in this trap. I then shot the final arrows that was needed, and down the Giga went. 
I quickly made my way up to the snow to grab some prime meat from some mammoths nearby, but I was just in time as the Giga was about to wake up, so I quickly grabbed Narcotic, fed it to him, just in time to save the tame. And then finally, my Giga tamed up. I now had everything that I needed to take on the Forest Titan, but I needed to make a rush to get back, as time was running out. I grabbed the final remaining tributes, being the sauropod vertebrae from some brontes nearby, which would also give me all the hide that I needed. I then force fed Magmus some meat to get him all healed up, and I made my way back to the sunken forest to make some giga saddles. I then had Clementine and Gumbo breed, while I took alternate me into the jacuzzi so we could relax and bond together as we waited for those eggs. I was really running out of time. And the fact that half of the Gigas only popped with 30 melee while the others got the 220 was really not helpful at all. As I was doing my meat run, I came up with a plan that I would fight the Forest Titan in two different teams. So I raised up some more Velos, grabbed all my Alpha Rexes and I went to throw them out at the boss arena. Alpha 1, 2, 3 and 4 would be willing to help us in this fight. I then made my way back to do some imprints, but since the Gigas were vegetarians, I wasn't feeling confident, so I knew I needed more reinforcements. So I went back to my desert base to grab Team Bravo, which is all the Rexes that didn't get a chance to fight the Desert Titan. I also cryoed up Chompamus Prime because we needed a fearless leader, and finally did some more imprints, made some more saddles, and I threw out Team Bravo, complete with the Velos. I now had my two teams of Rexes and Velos ready, and finally the Gigas were finishing up. So I started cryoing up all of them, healed them up and brought them to the arena. My two teams were set, looking fierce and it was time to take on the cave and summon the Forest Titan. I made my way over quite easily with Magmus to grab the artifact, then kited a bunch of dinos away from the terminal so that I would have the opportunity to spawn in the boss. There's really a lot of things in this cave and I can't imagine fighting through them. So finally it's time to enter the arena a second time as we enter the forest titan. I am Groot. So what? I am Groot. I am Groot! My heart was beating as me and Team Bravo made our way over to Forest Titan. It didn't take long to see that this guy was a force to be reckoned with as I slowly started shooting him, trying to get all the tames to aggro on him. His sheer size was truly intimidating, cautiously jumping away at his steps. But he managed to step on me once and I got a feel for just how strong this guy was. One of the Gigas appeared to be encumbered and as the Titan was distracted I tried to go in to go and drop its inventory. But the Titan managed to step on me the second I was there, nearly ending my journey there and then. But finally this Giga was back in the fight and I needed to back off. The uh, fight didn't really last very long and I was now down to just two Rexes and one Giga make that one Rex and one Giga? So I hopped off to give myself some passive stam healing and as I waved my way back I was too late to save the final Giga. It was now just me and one Rex up against this beast. Team Bravo was falling. This fight was one we were not gonna win. I did one more grab of stam to try and save my last Rex and get back in on the fight but before I could even get there I realized just how bloody he was and I needed to jump back and grab Team Alpha. Once my final Rex has fallen, I reached back to the spawn and I saw that one of the Gigas never went, which means Team Bravo still had a fighting chance and I was adamant to finish this fight with them. Despite the bloody Giga and my damaged up mana, I gave it my all for one final stand. Let's go! Let's go. 
and finally I had my victory. The Titan was officially down. I got my quick little reward card and got to go through all my nice juicy new loot. I collected my Dermis and went back to Team Alpha. You guys were just laying eggs. Once I had all of them cryoed up, I made my way back to the forest base, sat in the jacuzzi for one final time. So, but how you been? Good, good. What about you? You look a bit tired? Yeah, good, good. Took a forest titan out. Uh, let me show you. So I mounted my dermis and my trophy on my wall, and I went to bed to sleep off the exhaustion, because this fight really took a lot out of me. The next day I placed down some gravestones to say goodbye to Team Bravo for their victorious sacrifice, and I made my way over to the desert base. I wanted to grab all my loot and move to the final location. That's when I spotted a package coming in, and I assumed it had to be from Hannibal. There was my Jaeger BP, as well as a note inside. Pineapple pizza is bigger than Kruger Ops. Love, Hannibal. Seriously? So I hopped on Patrick with all my valued loot, and I started flying through the city. I had to grab some paste on the way, and then I went over to the sunken forest to grab all my juicy loot from there as well. By day 69 I cryoed up all the gatchas and I worked on getting the last missing resources to make myself an industrial forge. Also a bunch of building material, loaded up Patrick and then I heard a dodo, so I went to knock it out. I didn't want to leave the alternate version me alone, so I named the dodo Muffin Lucas and I put the two of them on the couch Guys. to watch some TV. Here. It was about time I took myself out of the jacuzzi because I was looking like a prune. But finally, it was time to say goodbye to these two guys, say goodbye to the forest base and off to the third location as I ventured to the snow. I stumbled upon a pretty cool location not too far away from the boss arena. So I started placing down all my foundations, making a really tiny place this time. I filled in my walls with greenhouse and my ceiling, and finally the structure was coming together nicely. I placed an outside little hatchery, just so I can hatch up some gigas. Finally my furniture decor mods went down, and now I present to you... Snow Glow Bed and Breakfast. It might be tiny, but it's got all the amenities that you might need, including a large jacuzzi and bathtub overlooking the frozen mountains. You've got an amazing comfortable king size bed, as well as a duck pond where you can go and sit and relax. And of course we had to throw in a little friend in case you get lonely, so say hello to little Olaf. But now it was time to get back to business. So I made my way over to one of the apparent best locations for metal on extinction. I dropped down my forge, threw out Kevin and started farming up a bunch of metal. Now yes, this location was good for metal, but I would later come to regret this decision a lot. I won't foreshadow too much, but be sure to be on the lookout for how much I hated this location. I then went to another location, got a bunch more metal, filled up Blimpy, cryoed up Magmus, and I made my way back to the metal location yet again. Finally I reached, hopped Blimpy closer to the forge, dropped off all the metal and did a quick count to make sure I had enough for the replicator once it would be smelted. I then cryoed up Blimpy, hopped on Magmus and made it back just before the heat got to me. The next day I literally passed a better metal location as I ventured back to the valley of the shadow of death. I took two of my gigas, riding an unimprinted one, luckily realizing in time, as I got off Cayman Time and started fighting with the 220s. I then realized Cayman Time's health was really low, but before I could even try to cry her up, she was no more. So I force fed the giga, a bunch of meat, and I continued my fight inside to farm up all the hearts I possibly can. Finally I had enough and I needed to get out of here. But of course some more gigas put up a fight to try and block me from getting out of this forsaken lands. Even the second one really nearly bringing me to my knees. But finally I was out, I had all the hearts that I wanted and me and Blimpy hopped safely away. The next day I dropped down a gravestone for Clementsheim, hopped on Blimpy with all the resources and made my way over to the King Titan terminal as it was time for me to get my rep made. 
I then cryoed a blimpy and made my way over to my metal location to grab whatever metal I possibly could. I could only grab about half the stacks as that's all what blimpy could take, so I left magmas behind and I yeeted myself over to the terminal yet again. I then dropped off the first half of metal and got tempted by an explorer note on the way back. But of course there was a wyvern there camping the note. So I was now in trouble, Blimpy was definitely not a tame that could outrun a wyvern. So I tried to get myself some height, that way at least a lot less wyverns will aggro on me. I made one final leap to try and get to the top of the cliff and that's when I had a big brain moment to throw out the giga. I did miss my jump a bit and nearly fell to my death but finally I had one of my gigas out and I could handle the situation promptly. Finally me and Blimpy made our way back to the metal location but because Magmus was there a lot of insects started attacking him so I did a quick little switcheroo to take care of all of the bugs, snakes and just everything that was trying to attack us but by this time the heat had gotten to my health and I had to leap away to get to safety. Now I needed to heal up before I could go back which is what I did on the next day. Finally I made it back to Blimpy, luckily he was safe in his tucked away corner. I then transferred the last medal to him and again my health got pretty low as I cried up Magmus, hopped back on Blimpy just in time to get away from a spino that I didn't even notice was there and now it was a race against the heat. Can I get out just in time before the heat gets to me? Well luckily this time I did. That metal location seriously sucked and I needed to do something about it. But hey, I had my rep and that's all that I worried about now. On the start of day 36, I just knew I had to fix this problem that I created for myself. So I made my way over to demolish the industrial forge, grabbed all the material that it gave me and I hopped Blimpy back to the desert base as I still had a bunch of metal there. I did a quick run for some stone so I could make some more paste. That way I would have all the resources that I needed to make a replacement forge. But a lot of those resources was originally for my industrial cooker. So I hopped on Magmus and went to farm up a bunch more metal and oil inside the city as well as grab some paste so I could finally get myself an industrial cooker so I can get some med brews and end this whole trauma of not having to worry about my health all the time. I then farmed up the last remaining nodules made my industrial cooker and I loaded up Magmus with everything that I gathered. Made my way back to the new metal location which would be a lot safer, dropped down the foundations as well as my industrial forge, filled it up with metal that really didn't take long at all, this location was better. So I don't know what that whole hype was around that location, it nearly killed me. And finally on day 79 I dropped down my industrial cooker, went out with Janus to farm up a bunch of tinto berries, a bunch of narco berries, make some narcotics and put everything in the cooker to cook up some made brews. Finally dropped down all my giga eggs, grabbed a little bit of metal so I could make a feeding trough and of course went out on a gigantic meat run. I filled up the troughs and I was ready to pop the eggs as time was starting to run out before I needed to take on the ice titan next. So I went around on day 81, imprinting all the gigas and luckily these guys weren't vegetarian and they all had the 220 melee. I then threw out my alpha team of rexes so I could free up some cryo space, finished up all the imprints of all the remaining gigas and started cryoing them up. The next day I went back to the fighting arena, dropped down all my gigas to look onto my army I then went back to industrial forge, placed down the rep and I dropped down a smithy so I could make all the giga saddles that were still missing. I also did another metal run to fill up the forge and then I went out to start searching for the remaining tributes that I needed for the fight. The last remaining tributes were spinos and unfortunately I forgot to keep them when I was running OSDs. So I had to go back to my favorite location on the map, the hell itself nearly misjudging just how much the heat had taken down my health and forgetting I didn't take med brews yet, I hopped away just in time as I was already on broken bones. Man I hated the sulfur area. But finally I had all the tributes that I needed, I could group the gigas in a piles together and heal them up. The next day I grabbed my med brews in case I ever get myself in some bad situations again 
and I went over to the desert to grab Andy since he's never seen a Titan and fight before. Fight? But it's time to introduce our next guest feature, Nettie the Noodle. Hi Kruger, it's Kay. I hope it's not too much of a bother, but I've got the doctor on the line for you. Doctor? What doctor? Okay. Dr. Newman here. Um, hi doc. The commander told me you're planning on taking down the ice kaiju soon. I need to get access to its secondary brain once you're done. Wait, secondary brain? It has two? What do you need it for? Don't tell me you're also trading body parts. Ah, you've met Hannibal, that one-eyed freak of a parasite. No, I'm not. See, I believe that we are about to see the first ever Category 5. And I don't think that Commander Jaegers can handle that. You mean they are going to get even bigger? Look, I have a theory. To prove it, I can use the same knowledge as the rangers and drift with a kaiju. Doctor, are you mad? The neuroload will be too much for a person to handle. It can kill you. Guys, think about it. I can tell you exactly what they're planning, their weaknesses, everything. Well, I'm taking this thing down tomorrow. If you're on some suicide knowledge mission, I can't stop you. But I will call you as soon as it's done. I love how I'm running all the commander's errands. Anyway, I made it over to the cave, threw out my run gigas, but they didn't even survive two minutes. So I had to throw another one out as a distraction just to get back on Magnus, and I returned the next day with one of my highly leveled gigas. And this guy made it ease of running through the cave. Finally, I healed him up and I was ready to start the final titan fight. The Ice Titan was definitely nervous for this one, as he's rated one of the most difficult of them all. I spawned in, and didn't have a clue where Magnus was, when I spotted him way off in the distance, right in front of the Titan. So I rushed over as quick as I could, hopped on Magnus, and I leaped to safety, back to where my Giga army was. I nervously whistled all of them to get ready for the fight and I went to get the aggro of the Ice Titan, but he was already making his way to me, and it was time for us to get in on this fight. So I did a quick dash through the Titan to hope that they would all aggro on him, and now the fight was on. I cautiously moved for his steps because I knew the punches that this guy throws would be a serious hit on Magnus. So I got the Gigas to start biting away at his toes, as my strategy was to keep the Titan aggroed on me so he wouldn't punch the Gigas. That way I can slowly walk backwards and keep his focus directed on me as they damage him. But of course I didn't pay attention to my stamina and I got the first punch from the Titan. His roars were definitely super intimidating, so much so that I was too nervous to hop off to gain that passive stamina. But I didn't have much of a choice. He was marching towards me, slapped me yet another time, and now I was forced to hop off to gain the stamina. I tried to punch Magmus to speed it up, but I had a cryopod in hand and this guy was marching towards me. Super nervous, I hopped on and started to dash away as quick as I can to escape the next punch. But then my Giga army ended up finishing the hey. job and I wasn't even there. I didn't even do anything, guys. But I had another look at all my nice juicy new loot suits. and I got tech suits, which was amazing find. I then collected my dermis when I heard something coming behind me. Ah, uh, Hannibal, what, what are you doing here? Kruger, hang up that radio. I'll take you from here. Hannibal! <sighs> I knew you'd be here. Step away from that kaiju, you selfish, corrupt leech. I need that brain. The brain? You can have that. What are you cooking us, a nice stew? It's got too much pneumonia. It's worthless. Worthless? Hey! Watch this. Here goes nothing. Initiating drift in three, two, one. Oh, good! I definitely didn't want to stay back and see how the doctor killed himself, so I rather made my way back to base. Kruger, Kruger, wait! Uh, doctor, thank goodness you're alive. How did your crazy experiment go? The plan, it's not gonna work. The only way you can get that category five taken out is with an army of other kaijus as well. Right, cause that's something we have access to. You see Kruger, it is. The kaijus are somewhat brainwashed by the corrupted nodules. The lower categories can be tamed. Take out the nodules on their bodies, 
three to be exact, and you'll be in control of them. Wait, team a kaiju? Talk to you, sure? Yes. I have to get to the commander. There's more I need to tell him. Wait, I mean, tell me also, Doc? And just like that, the doctor was away. I mounted all my trophies. And now it's time for a heart farming montage. As I spent the next three days getting all the hearts I would need to summon all the titans as well as the final king titan. Finally, I had all the hearts, pearls and corrupted nodules I needed to construct my first ever Jaeger, which is exactly what I did on day 89. I then chucked in all the metal to see what I would need to make the cannon as well. I then went out to collect all the final tributes required for all the titans. And then I spotted a 50k Ellie vein, which would give me all the Ellie needed to make what I wanted. I sat all the gigas on aggressive, but this was a huge mistake as some of them wandered off. And when I tried to bring them back, I ended up going out of reach for the Ellie vein and it ended. Luckily, on day 91, I spotted a 25k one. Finally, I had the Ellie vein protected, farmed up all the Ellie, and now I had to head back and make everything that I wanted to make, which included a cannon for my mech and some missing tech gear. Now, I was about to feel like a superhero as I stepped in a Jaeger for the first time. I tested out the siege cannon just to see how it works. And now, citizens, Bow down to Superhero Kruger, as I had my first ever experience of a tech suit during my 100 days events when I got ready to tame the Ice Titan. I threw out my Jaeger, put in all my cannons and I made quick work of the nodules. This cannon was amazing. Only 3 hit shots would take down a nodule, but it is a bit slow and you do need to be cautious not to damage the Titan too much. In no time, I had its shoulder taken out. And finally, I was down to the final nodule. I cautiously went around as I ended up shooting my last cannon as was now forced to use my plasma rifle. I shot the titan in the chest, got smacked in the back by it, but I was determined to finish the job. He froze me and jumped on top of me, but luckily I unfroze just in time to get away. I took one final stand, and finally the Ice Titan went down. Definitely not the cleanest tame ever as he lost quite a bit of health, but hey, I had now Olaf double XL, and this beast was amazing to have in my army. I then flew over in superhero style, grabbed some more tributes and some more Ellie, and finally hopped back in Magmus, went over to the Forest Titan, and I made my way through the cave. Hello citizens down there, meet my Giga. So I cleared up the entire cave, spawned in the forest titan and now it was time for yet another tame. Hopped in the Jaeger, equipped my siege cannon and I shot the first cannon. The forest titan is super slow so it was a lot easier to get his arm shot off which was something I wasn't expecting as as soon as the first nodule was cleared his actual arm came off, and then the right one, and I now just had to take care of his chin. I shot my final siege cannons, switched over to the plasma rifle, and down the titan went. This one was a lot cleaner, so I kinda wish I did it the other way around. But finally, I had my massive Groot in alpha form, joining my army to take on the king titan. And now we enter the end game of the video. The last few days went by so quickly. I went around to grab my trophies, marched Groot back to the Titan Arena, which took a full day, threw out all my gigas, and went to the terminal to make sure I had everything that I needed. I then grabbed all my hearts, and I did another quick Ellie vein as I needed a lot more Ellie for the fight. The Ellie vein took no time and I farmed up all the Ellie. Now my mech could be powered. But for some reason, a meteor shower started. The first one I've seen in 95 days. I went to seek shelter inside the city, but this was definitely giving me end of the world vibes. Finally, once it cleared, I went to farm up the Titan Bow of Venom and all I needed now was the enraged Rexes. So I went over to a pretty popular location where as soon as you kill one, they just keep spawning back. 
I threw out the Giga, took out the first, second, and third corrupted wrecks, and finally I had all the tributes. I made a quick trip back to the desert to grab my tribute from there, and then I went back to the ice base to grab the ice titan to start marching him up. But halfway through my walk up to the mountain, another meteor shower started, and I had to seek shelter inside the snow globe. This was really nerve wracking just one of these things could end my journey as I know it. But finally, Olaf joined the arena. I went to line him up. I also threw out all my remaining Rexes that I still had, and my army was somewhat ready. I then went to spend one final night in the snow globe bed and breakfast. And then on day 99, I went to the commander as I spotted one of the biggest Jaegers I've ever seen. I went down through the roof to look for my colleagues as we were about to go to war. Hello, are you guys here? Oh, there they are. Ah, oh, Kruger, you made it. We're just about to march to the bridge. You know, I was completely wrong about you, Connor. Welcome to the team, mate. Um, it's Kruger. Whatever, mate. Dang, what is this thing? That tank is the last of the T90s. First generation Mach 1. The heaviest, oldest Jaeger in the system. That looks insane. We just call it the rust bucket. Alright, Commander, so what's the plan here? Sir Commander, come in! Oh, hi, okay. This is Commander Cork here. I know, sir. I called you. Commander, I am picking up rising kaiju signatures. The doctor was right. We are about to see a double event. What categories were they? There is a category four heading to your location. Fast. And wait. Hold on. At the bridge. It's, uh, it's a Category 5. The first ever. Uh, right Rangers, listen up. Today, at the edge of our hope, at the edge of our time, we are chosen not to only believe in ourselves, but each other. Today, we face the monsters that are at our door. Today, we take the fight to them. I will take care of the Category 4. Jacko, Kruger, you take care of the Category 5. Godspeed, gentlemen. Today, we are cancelling the apocalypse. After that deep war speech, we got ready to march to the arena while the commander mounted Cherno Alpha, the biggest, oldest Jaeger. This thing was an actual tank, but it didn't take long for that Category 4 to arrive and I introduce to you Leatherback, one of the first Category 4s we've seen to date. With its ability to knock out any electronics in the system, luckily Cheno Alpha was nuclear. It was an immense fight. Luckily the commander took care of this, otherwise we wouldn't have made it to the bridge. After a long fight, the commander did a nuclear punch that ended the category 4. But this punch proved to be way too costly and it actually backfired and Cherno Alpha got malfunctioned and blew up. That means that our backup was officially lost. Day 100 and we spawn in the Gamma Titan. Now this is one beast that should not be taken lightly. Its sheer size sent shivers down my spine as I saw the first ever Category 5. I threw out my Jaeger and I was ready to go to war. Whoop. Good shot. Watch out, you've got meteors coming down on you. Ooh. Right, my mech just got sat on fire. I pretty much thought we had the fight. I mean, it was going to be close, but Whoa. then my entire Giga army was wiped out and the Titans started falling. Now I knew we underestimated this guy and we had to make a tactical I'm trying retreat. To retreat. I'm dead. 
close to the... Luckily, the Titan turned back, because I was on a slither of health as I jumped down the cliff. This was probably not the best location, as I jumped right into the Valley of Death. I hopped out of my Jaeger as it was about to explode, and I boosted away to try and get out of this forsaken area. And luckily, I managed to pull off a great escape. Back at the desert base. You got any beers? Any beers there, Crooks? What are you smoking in that thing, mate? I thought you chuck us one of those. I think I think we need a fucking puff of that, mate. Well, shit, I mean, that didn't really go as planned, did it? No. That was fucking bullshit, mate. Yeah, yeah how about you chuck me that and give me a smoke? Because I need to relax, mate. I need to wind down. Look who finally showed up to the party. A little late. Amanda, what the hell happened? Chuno Alpha is no more, but so is the Kaiju. I just have received our new orders. Orders, schmorders, mate. I'm celebrating. Before you ask, Commander, we're not celebrating a victory. We're just celebrating the fact that we're alive. I mean, you were supposed to be our backup. There is no time to celebrate our victory, nor to mourn our losses. It's like it's not even listening. Listen up, everyone. Commander, who the hell are you talking to, mate? It's just us two here. Right, we have been instructed to take the remaining Jaegers to the war program. Commander, what, what do you mean? We still need to take care of size and the Terrible. Sorry, mate. You guys are seriously leaving before this is done? Orders are orders, Kruger. What can I say? Well, I'm not following that order. I will stay behind and finish this. I can't stop you, mate. Goodbye, Kruger. Now a quick special shout out to all the legends you see on screen for helping me behind the scenes. <laughs> These idiots really thought it was going to be that easy. <laughs>